What's up, fellas? All hell's breaking loose as usual today here. I'm about ready to blast myself with some hot steam. Now, it's kind of hard not to look like a queer when you're running from a fiery hot jet of steam like that, but hey, at my own expense, I wanted to show you how awesome this thing is. The premise of this series was supposed to be to test this larger boiler, monotube boiler, and to test the performance increase from this inline preheater. But it has just turned into a battle to the death with this pump. I'm being really stubborn here. I should have just got rid of this thing long ago, but uh, I fixed the pump again. <laughs> And I'm now going to strap down the thermal couple so the thermal couple doesn't blow out of there on us. And we're going to try it one more time with this pump. This is the last time I'm going to bore you with this. But I've got to do it because I've invested a lot of money in these pumps. And i got to get my money's worth out of these things. So. All right, here we go, fellas, slow motion. Maybe I won't look like such a fairy in slow-mo. See if I get my honor back here. I'm gonna need a manly escape, please. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, not too bad. A well, little bit of a gay skip right there, but not quite as defaming as the first. <laughs> but anyway, I'm glad to see she took flight. That means we got thrust, boys, and I'm into it. Definitely happy this happened guys so that about got very interesting really quick i want to tell you what i mean that flame was starting to burn this line right here which just so happens to be the propane <laughs> yeah that would have got ugly real fast so we turned into a rocket engine there at some point essentially what's going on It looks like the bypass valve is the only way to do this. The flow rate's just too high. We gotta dump that excess somewhere. So we are not getting away with this without a bypass valve. I could get a higher pressure cutoff, but then we risk just blowing the pump and everything up again, maybe. We were running well above 160 PSI's, I believe, when I was holding this risking electrocution in the process so certainly a little bit more dangerous than i wanted to get today the pressure dropped just a little in that time span we burnt that much fuel so i got the pump sealed i can now just concentrate on not killing myself I think that'd be the best move. So, today's test just showed me that under no circumstances whatsoever can I allow this propane line to be made out of something that can be so easily burnt open. You gotta have more time than that to save yourself. I mean, that could get ugly. I don't know what that would've did, but uh, the flame that issued out of that hole would've most certainly got me in some way, maybe. So that's not cool. I don't expect people to be setting this thing down like that, really, but uh, man, not cool. So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to have to get another one of these braided lines and incorporate that into the design. The reason why this is a braided line is because during adjustments, a scenario unfolds in where superheated steam is blasted back down the line the boiler is suddenly provided with a charge of water beyond the orifice's ability to remove at the rated pressure so 
in all, this was actually a great test. I, I did not get the information I wanted, but I did end up with some info that may keep me from getting sued in the future. So it may be cheaper to just put a $10 PWM on this motor, but then will we be able to get the pressure we want? Well, I guess we'll go ahead and harvest a PWM off a prior build. I use this thing all the time, unfortunately, but um, that's one way to get your money's worth out of something. Bought this off eBay. I'll leave a link in the description for this thing if you guys um, want to take a look at it. I do recommend when you buy it, you stiffen up the potentiometer because it will inevitably crack loose on you. Okay, fellas. We got a PWM hooked up. Now, I'm going to set the pressure at about 120. I really need to get a glycerin gauge. I'm going to see if I can turn this water flow down. Uh oh. We're still getting great pressure. We're at 160 psi right now. So, I'm going to turn it back down to 140. We've got to get this flow rate way down. We are way over. Up. Oh, here goes the overspray. Wow, we're right at 160 right there. This pump will overheat at this speed. So this is kind of showing that this idea might not work. Because here's why, guys. This pump isn't being delivered with a low amperage, low voltage current. It's being given chopped current. So it's still getting high amperage in it. And because this cooling fan isn't spinning very fast, it's liable to burn itself up. So that's a pretty slow flow rate, but I don't know. It's going to work. Right at 160 psi. I'd hate to turn it down anymore, but we have to. We are on the verge of blowing. Okay, so there's 140. I got to reduce the flow a little bit yet. Yep, there it goes. I'm gonna have to fix this. It's over 150. It's gonna be very jumpy. The armature is very barely spinning. I don't know if that's the flow rate I want or not, but I can definitely see the pulsations in that. The camera's poor frame rate is picking it up very well. That is so weird. I am not seeing this in real life, guys. Finally found a something useful about bad camera frame rate. Huh. That is so weird. That's like something for smarter every day right there. <laughs> seeing 140s not good fellas this ain't gonna work guys this goes to show you how sometimes ideas on paper don't work out in real life now imagine this thing sitting out in the sun we're at 140 degrees 150 is like the most you ever want to put any of this stuff through in my experience anything past that and you're asking for it. So we're blowing up the PWM. This is gonna get real expensive here. The bypass valve is the only way. It's the only way. So, I need to shut it off before I burn up my PWM. Oh man, that thing is so hot you can't touch it. 
So guys, one cool thing about this experiment is it does exhibit how an idea that a person might leave in a comment string or an idea you might put on paper may sound great and be just the solution to all your problems. But when you put it into practice, you find something called ratings. Some of this stuff is just rated to work at certain levels. You can't just buy any old PWM and hook it up to something and get it to work. I thought I was gonna solve our problem with a $10 PWM and that ain't gonna happen. I'm gonna be buying PWMs at 150 degrees. So what do we do now? Put a cooling fan on it? Which by the way is what this job was all about. This is a, a duct cooling line that kept my PWM cool and the other side keeps the Chinese pump without a cooling fan cool. Had a YouTuber tell me that these things don't need cooling fans, they're designed to be enclosed, and that I'm an idiot for doing this. I don't know why he hates me so much, I'm just trying to keep burning up my motor, dude. Jeez, man. I get so much grief on comments, you guys wouldn't believe it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I just think that's cool that that didn't work. For the simple fact that I kind of knew it wouldn't. I had a bad feeling it was going to burn the pump up. I didn't know my PWM would hate it so much, but it did, man. 150 degrees is a limit for me. I'll never push any type of solid state circuit past that. I think 150 Celsius is the actual limit. If you know for sure, hit us up in the comments with that. But uh, we're, we're going bypass valve, fellas. It's a beautiful idea, but it's very expensive. That's why I didn't implement it already. We're like getting into the thousand dollar territory here on this machine. So I'm gonna publish this and uh, go buy a bunch of hardware. Back to the subject of me being called an idiot by commenters. You guys gotta realize, I obviously don't run stuff at its rated capacity. Everything is just tortured in this place so yes i do have to cut holes in my motor casings and build elaborate cooling systems because that pwm also gets that hot when you're running this motor so without this duct system on for any long duration forget about it you can fill up the crankcase and your rear differential with this thing without needing a cooling system anything beyond that you're going to start fires and Turn up your electronics. This pump doesn't need a cooling system if you run it at 12 volts and the four or five amps it suggests. Well, what if I wanna put 150 amps into it real quick because I need a fast 500 PSI's. I know it can do it. Gotta have the hole, man. On a more realistic note, I actually have a video testing the amperage capacity of wire that thick. You can get 50 amps to pass through a wire that size and it glows yellow hot when you're doing it. I actually used this very transformer in the video. I'll try and find it and leave you a link. I got so many videos, it could take me 10 minutes to find that thing.